Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna be making a step indicator app using React and we're gonna have this simple layout. We will be on the home page at the beginning and this is just name sign up, but this is mostly used for forms. You can use it for anything. We're just gonna come to this page, sign up step one. And right now I made it so you can go to next step, clicking on the buttons on the top, but we can also make it like you would have normally either back or next button or links here. So this is how it works now. We have it both ways and we can also disable that completely. So we're gonna be able to add something to our links on the top. So let me show you that. So right now, if I refresh, everything's gonna be working the same way. We're still gonna be able to go next, next, back. But right now we're not gonna be able to do that with these, which I think is more of what you wanna do. Instead of clicking that, you would probably have some validation here if it's form and then whenever you click next you would be able to validate first and then allow user to move to the next step so we're gonna go over both ways so right here i have my app opened and for all the styles i added them to this code pen link so you guys can come here just copy this and we're gonna come back to our app css we're gonna remove everything and just paste that these are all the styles we're gonna be using for this small project and the second step we're gonna need to do is to install one thing so we can open a new one here and we're gonna do npm i react-router-tom once that's installed we can close this and we're just gonna remove this uh, h2 and this tip so the first thing we want to get here is we're gonna import browser router as a router we also want to get route and link from react-router-tom so we're going to be using react router for this example and then here we're just going to render that router we're going to have a nav and inside that nav we're just going to add two links so the first one is just going to be home and the second link is just gonna say sign up. So this first link, we're gonna add to slash, which is gonna be our homepage. And our next link is gonna go to, well, let's add to slash sign up slash step one. So whenever we click on that, we wanna go to sign up slash step one. And at the same time, since we're on homepage right now, we're gonna add a few routes here. So we're gonna add route and it's gonna have exact path slash. This is just something we wanna show on the home page, just so we know it there. So we're just gonna add an h2 with a class name of home title, and we're just gonna write home. And we're also gonna need a route for our sign up. So before doing that. Let's come here and we're gonna create that component. So we're gonna have signup.js. And here, everything that's gonna go inside signup. So I'm gonna use the snippet here, which I have, which is ES6, and I'll link the snippets I'm using in the description. If you guys wanna use that and not type everything, this just gives me a basic template. The first thing we're gonna do here is let's just add a class name of signup first. We're gonna go to app. And here we want to import that component. So import sign up from dot slash sign up. So before doing anything, we're going to add another route here. And we're going to close it. It's also going to have exact path. And we're going to go to slash sign up slash. And then here we're just going to pass step. So after passing this, we're going to be able to pass anything to our nav links or links we're going to have. And we're gonna go to sign up slash whatever we put here for the links. And the other thing we wanna add is component we wanna render, which is gonna be sign up. Now this is connected here, so sign up slash one, as you guys can see. So let's go back to our sign up component now. And inside of this, we wanna add a div with a class of main container. These are classes just because I have styles applied, but if you guys don't mind about that, you don't need to add anything. Here we're gonna add our step indicator, which is gonna be a separate component. And under that, we're gonna have output. 
And inside this output, we're going to render all the routes we're going to have. So we can come back to app, copy this line, and we can paste it here. So the only thing we're going to have here is we can remove this browser router and we're only going to leave route and link. So inside output, we're going to add out. This is going to have exact path, which is going to be slash sign up slash step. One. And we're just going to add first step here. Right now we're not adding any buttons yet, so this is just going to be first step. And we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to copy this three more times. We're just going to change this to second step. This is going to be third and fourth. And here we want to change this to step 2, this is going to be step 3, and this is going to be step 4. So whenever we are in this URL, we're just going to render these. So right now if we click sign up, we're going to be on step 1. This output, which is this white container, is always going to show. And we're just showing this text, which is first step. If we go to step 2, it's going to be second step, and so on. Now after that's done, we need to add our step indicator here. And this is going to be pretty simple. So we're going to create another component called step indicator.js. I'm going to do ES6 again, just to get the basic template here. And then here, we're just going to create an array of objects for our links, just so we can render them once. So we're just going to do const steps equals array of objects. And here we're going to have a property called path. So this path is going to be the same as whatever we have here. So we can just copy this. This is going to be our first path, which is going to go to sign up step one. And we can just copy this object three more times because we have four steps. And the only thing we're going to change here is this is going to be step two, step three, and step four. And then here, we're going to add a class name to this div, which is going to be step indicator. And inside of that, we're going to use this array, which is steps. So steps.map. And then for each step. And here, we're going to use navlink instead of link, because that's going to make things much easier for us. Because we're going to get that navlink, and we're going to compare it against the current URL and based on that, we're going to be adding active styles and whatever else we want. So to do that, we're going to go all the way up and we're just going to import navlink from react-router-dom. So inside our map, we're just going to render that navlink. And inside that navlink, we'll just write hi for now, just so we can format this code. We're going to have a path. The same way we have for the links, it's just two, and this is going to go to step dot path, which is the only thing we have inside this object. But if you guys want to add more things, or let's say if you want to show different text here, you can do that here. In our case, for our text, we're just going to pass index, and index starts with zero, and we have steps one, two, three, and four. So instead of that, we're just going to do index plus one. So that's the text we're going to show. We're also going to add key to our name link, which is going to be index. And the next thing we want to add is active class name. But let's wait with that and I'll show you in a second before. So before doing that, we're going to go to sign up and then we want to import that. So import and it's going to be step indicator from dot slash step indicator. And we are just going to render that component right here before this div with a class name of output. We just want to render that step indicator. And it's already going to have all the styles we added. So we have an issue here that step indicator is not showing. So let's go back here, see what we did here. So I forgot to add parentheses here. So we can just, we don't need to cut this. We can just add a return here. And then we're going to render our nav link and save that. So that now works. And the only thing we need to add here is an HR under them. So we're going to render an HR 
but we're gonna need to wrap everything in either a div or a fragment because we have two elements so we're just gonna add a fragment here and this hr is just gonna be this line right here so right now if we try this this works already and the only thing we're gonna need to add for this as well is just the active link and navlink has a prop called active class name and we're just gonna pass a class called active link and we can format this a bit so let's just move this in a new line so you guys can see it and if i go back to our app we're gonna see that we already added that so here active link we're just gonna changing the background to light blue and color to white which is this link right here and the way this works is if this link so if this path that's two which is sign up step one currently is matching the url which is this so if they are the same it's gonna add the active background or active styles whatever you might have for that but if we click on number two now this path is step two for the link and the step two is also here in the url so this gets active classes for this and that's how this is gonna work so we're gonna we can go to four three two one and move around but in case you guys want to add the buttons like you would usually have here we're just going to do it with links right now and the way to disable these let's do that first if we go back to our app there's going to be this that's disabled so we have cursor default we would have cursor pointer in this case because you should be able to click on these so we're just going to make that default and remove the pointer now you can still click on them well, you just remove the styles, so you can still go to step one, step two. So we're gonna go to step indicator, and we're just gonna let's make this smaller. We just need to add a single function, and we're gonna call it handle stop. We're gonna go pass an event, and the only thing we're gonna do is e dot prevent default. So now the only thing we wanna do is copy this function, and we're just gonna add on click event to our nav link and call that so the only thing this function is gonna do is it's gonna prevent this link any of these four going to the url like we have this path here the path is still gonna stay but we're gonna prevent them from going there so if we click on two three or four or one nothing's gonna happen so now the user is not gonna be able to do that and the second example is what you would usually have is let's go back to sign up and we're just gonna add the links here so we imported link earlier now we're gonna use it here so under this text that's first step we're just gonna add a div that's btm container because that's where i added styles for the links and the only thing we need to do here is we're just gonna add a link that's gonna be next so the first one is not gonna have back it's only gonna have next and if we go back here we can just copy these so whatever we need so let's just copy one of them just so we have so we don't need to type everything so the first one is going to have two and it's going to go to step two because we're on the first step when we click next we need to go on step two so that's already going to get added right here so now we can go there so let's go back and let's add more of these so inside second step we're also going to do btm container and we're going to just render two of these links under each other so if we're on step two we're gonna have back and next so if we click back on step two we want to go to step one and if we're on step two and we click next we want to go to step three usually what you would like to likely do is when you render this route instead of doing this you would probably have a component that's like step two or sign up sign up step two whatever it is instead of copy pasting this multiple times but just to make things simpler here we're gonna copy this for third step this whole button container so if we're on step three we click back we want to go to step two and if we click next we want to go to step four and the last thing for fourth step we're gonna add the same thing so we're only gonna have back we're not gonna have next usually it would finish whatever you're doing here let's say if it's sign up you would finish the sign up here so this would be finish and you can redirect the user but for in our case we're only going to have back and for fourth step going back would be step three 
So now, let's say we're on home, we click sign up, we're gonna show everything. We can go to step two, we can go back to step one, try that, step two, step three, we can go back again to step two. And then if we click on step four, we're not gonna have an option to move forward, we can only go back. If you wanna reset this, or maybe you can add a button that's like edit, you can click edit and it goes to step one as well. You could do that. But this is usually how it's gonna work. So now you probably wanna add this as a buttons. It's easier to make it with links like this. So that would be the best approach. But if you actually need to check, if you use this for a form and you need to check some type of validation, you would probably, instead of doing this, so let's go to step one, I'll show you that way as well. So you can just, instead of doing this link, we're, we'll just add a button that would be, let's say, next. And with the button, you can't really add these. So you will need to use something like history. So we can do that. Let me show you that. So we would have like const history equals use history. And you would have another some function here. Let's go handle next step. And then you would probably have some if statement here to check for validation. And if validation is fine, you would just do history dot push and it would be the same url you're using here for the link so we can just get that and we're just gonna add it here and instead of using link we're using button now and we can just add on click equals handle next step so that would be everything you need to do now we only need to import use history so we're gonna do that here use history so now you have the next button, and you click next, you would go to second step. It would work the same way with link, like link does, but you would need to use history.push, but in this case you would add an if statement here or something for validation or whatever you want to do before letting the user actually go to the next step. So that would be it for this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.